welcome to narayana online digital classes i myself pragvendra presenting in front of you solution for physics paper for iit mains which one was held today in the morning that is 27th july in the morning presenting certainly this question paper is memory based questions whatever students have told us based on that only we have collected questions there will be some errors guaranteed when again paper will come then we will come with correct question paper and solution for time being see this solution you will be getting an idea of questions which one was being asked in iit presenting in front of you first question you can check this there are three bodies a b and c a is moving with velocity 9 meter per second it is colliding with b and b is at rest so first you take the collision between a and b a is moving with velocity 9 meter per second you are using conservation of linear momentum so m into 9 m1 u1 plus m2 u2 you can see that block b is considered to be at rest so it will be 2 m into 0 this will become m v1 plus 2 m v2 m m m cancelled you are getting v1 plus 2 v2 equal to 9 equation 1 they are telling you a and b have perfectly elastic collision for perfectly elastic collision relative velocity of approach must be equal to relative velocity of separation or coefficient of restitution will be 1 if you take 1 equal to v2 minus v1 by u1 minus u2 u1 is 9 and u2 is 0 you got v2 minus v1 equal to 9 number 2 add these two v1 will be cancelled you are getting 3 v2 3 v2 is 18 so v2 equal to 6 meter per second we are interested mainly in velocity of b so when a will strike b b will move with velocity 6 meter per second and it will be colliding with body c body c has mass 2m and c collision is perfectly inelastic in inelastic collision whenever you are considering both bodies will stick together and move at present it is at rest again you use conservation of linear momentum you will have 2 m into 6 now both are is sticking so it will become 4 m into v v will become m cancelled 12 by 4 this will become 3 meter per second this will be final velocity of b as well as c they are asking you final speed of c this will be final speed of b as well as c because they are sticking together and move so answer for this question is 3 meter per second it is 1 fundamental concept of perfectly elastic collision and perfectly inelastic collision i hope you understood it clearly every paper one question i have found that based on collision they had asked a particle is thrown upward at t equal to 0 it attains maximum height h so when you go for this you are projecting with velocity u and it is attaining height h so here velocity will be 0 when velocity is 0 then u will be equal to under root 2 g h now further you see what they say you it is found at height h by 3 at t equal to t1 and t equal to t2 the h by 3 this height you are taking h by 3 y equal to ut minus half gt square to h by 3 equal to 
under root 2 g h u t minus half g t square. So, half g t square minus root 2 g h t plus h by 3 equal to 0. Now, this is a x square plus b x plus c equal to 0. Quadratic equation, you will get the value of t equal to how much? Minus b under root 2 g h plus minus under root b square, b square minus 4 a c by 2 a, 2 into half g, 2 cancel, here it is 2. So, you are getting now t will be equal to under root 2 g h plus minus, this one is under root 2 g h minus 2 g h by 3 by g, okay, the 6 minus 2, 4, root 2 g h plus minus 6 minus 2, 4 g h by 3 by g. So, what will be the value of t 1? First, when it is going up, time will be less. So, t 1 will be under root 2 g h minus under root 4 g h by 3 by g and t 2 equal to under root 2 g h plus under root 4 g h by 3 by g. So, if you take the ratio g is cancelled, g h, g h, g h, g h is cancelled. Let you, so what will be the value of t 1 by t 2? t 1 by t 2 will be equal to root 2 minus root 4 by 3 by root 2 plus root 4 by 3. So, it is root 6 minus root 4 by root 6 plus root 4, clear. So, root 2 you can take out. So, it is root 6 minus 2 by root 6 plus 2. If root 2 you will remove, then it will become root 3 minus root 2 by root 3 plus root 2. Check the answer. If root 6 they are giving, then in my opinion it should be minus 2 plus 2. If root 3 they are giving, here it should be minus root 2 and here it should be plus root 2. In my opinion, okay, whatever question the A, B, C, D, 4 alternates they had given, perhaps it is wrong. In my personal opinion, beta, T1 by T2 should be equal to root 3 minus root 3 minus root 2 by root 3 plus root 2 should be. Is it clear to you? Now, let us move to next question. I am on question number 3. In YD IC light used is shifted from orange to blue. You know VIB gear, V I B VIB gear in this lambda simple one line. You know that fringe width, fringe width beta equal to lambda d by d in YDSE. d is the distance of a screen from double slits, a small d is separation between the slits, it is constant, they are just changing color from orange to blue. So, when you will go from orange to blue, orange to blue in this direction when you are going lambda is decreasing, here it is increasing order, here it is frequency increasing order. So, blue if you check 
lambda is lesser for blue in comparison to any green, yellow, orange or red. The lambda when decreases, beta here is proportional to lambda. When lambda will decrease, beta will decrease. So your answer for this question will be fringe width decreases when you are changing the color from orange to blue. So answer will be fringe width decreases. Is it clear to you? Now let us move to next question. I am now on number 4. In the circuit shown in figure, S1 remains constant. Oh, S1 they are closing it for a long time. If S1 they are closing and S2 they are keeping open, then it will behave like a conductor. So after a long time, your current which will flow through inductor, it will be E by R. Clear to you? So current which is flowing is E by R. Now they are telling you that S2 is closed, S1 is open. So now you will have to concentrate only on this circuit. So this is inductor, here you have 2R, here you have 4E, okay now this will become the circuit, okay now. So if you will take that, they are asking you DI by DT. So you will have, when you go for this, what you are getting? L DI by DT, see the moment you are opening S1 and S2, you are closing. At the time, all of a sudden current flowing through inductor will not change. Current flowing through inductor is E by R. So same current will flow through this. So L DI by DT, you will be considering here minus your current is E by R. So E by R into 2R plus 4E, this is equal to 0, R is cancelled. So you will have L di by dt, Kirchhoff's second law you have applied, this plus 6E equal to 0, they are asking you di by dt. So di by dt will become minus 6E by L. Are you understanding me? So your, the rate at which current will change at that moment, just the moment when you are opening S1 and you are closing S2, you should remember that in inductor, current will not change, current will be E by R only. So you are going via through this, okay, no, the flow is in this way you are going. So L di by dt plus E by R, 2R plus 4E is 0. This will be, di by dt will be minus 6E by L. Your answer will be number 2. Let you. Now, let us move to question number 5. Two identical tennis ball of mass M charge Q. Very famous problem, very common problem. In IIT also this model had come. They are telling you, from a common support, you have suspended, so you have suspended these two. You already know if masses are equal, charges may may not be equal. This angle, let us take as theta, this will also be theta, these two will be equal. Now what they had given you? They have given you M charge Q, okay, here I need only charge adhesions from a common support with the help of a string of length L. This length they have given you L, system is equilibrium, find the distance between the balls. So let us take this distance edge X, they are asking you X, and angle they have taken very, very small to you. So now in this direction tension will act. Just concentrate on this, this is T. If this angle is theta, 
here it will be t cos theta and here it will be t sin theta. Here mg is acting and here f electrostatic force will be acting. Clear to you? They have taken in terms of not 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught, they have taken k. So, T sin theta is how much? T sin theta equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught, you take k q squared by x squared. T sin theta will be balancing electrostatic force and T cos theta they have told you if no gravitational interaction between even though masses are there, there will be gravitational interaction, they have neglected that. So, T cos theta, this will be balanced by mg. So, you will have okay, tan theta, you are taking the ratio, tan theta equal to k q square by m g x square. Right now, they are asking you x. Right now, so if you will go for x, you will have to check m g is also there. You will have to go for x, tan theta how much you will be getting. If you go for tan theta, here tan theta will be perpendicular, this will become x by 2. If this one you have taken x, then this is x by 2. If I go for tan theta, it will become x by 2 L. Am I right? To substitute here x by 2 L k q square by m g x square. Now, you want x cube, this will become k q square 2 L, k q square 2 L and here remaining quantity is m g. So, x will become 2 k q square L by m g and power 1 by 3. So, answer you will have number 3, 2 k q square L by m g power 1 by 3. Tell me, clear to you? Very famous problem and really important problem. Now, let us move to question number 6. This is from vectors. Previous day also vector problem was there. For the given semicircle with center at O, choose the correct relation. A, B, C, D are points on the semicircle, okay, given A, B equal to B, C equal to C, D. They had given you A, B, more they have given no problem, means this distance equal to this distance equal to this distance. Then what they ask you, choose the correct relation. So, all are A, B equal to B, C equal to C, D. If I go for this, you have mod, if you are going for mod, this is radius mod B O will be equal to mod A O will be equal to mod O D, right. So, this is diameter. If I go, this is nothing but radius, okay, no. If I go for number 1, 2 B O, so 2 B O mod, this is nothing but diameter. So, this will be equal to mod A D and 2 A O, again it is diameter. So, you will have number 1. This is the correct answer because 2 B O or 2 A O or A D, all these magnitude part, it is diameter. If you will go for B O equal to 2 A O, it is impossible. Here also 2 B O equal to A O, it is again impossible. B O 
equal to a o and a d no. So, here it is wrong. So, these three answers are completely wrong. Simple you will have to check which one is diameter. Okay? So, answer for this is number 1. Let us move now to question number 7. A monoatomic gas is kept in 1 liter container. So, volume they have given you 1 liter means 10 to the power minus 3 meter cube. At a pressure, 1 atmosphere 10 to the power 5 Newton per meter square. Average energy per molecule. Now, concentrate on law of equipartition of energy. For one molecule, for one degree of freedom, energy is how much? You know, it is half kT, where k is Boltzmann constant. Am I right? No. It is energy associated with one molecule for one degree of freedom. For monoatomic gas, you have three different degrees of freedom. Molecule can possess kinetic energy along x direction, along y direction, along z direction. So, energy associated with one molecule will become 3 by 2 a t because they have given you energy per molecule. The energy per molecule is 2 into 10 to the power minus 9 joule. This is 3 by 2 kT. Now, k is what? This is 3 by 2 r by k, r by n a into t. But temperature they have not given, they have given us only p and v. So, we will use ideal gas equation. p v equal to n r t, r t will be p v by n. Okay, no? They are asking you find total number of molecules. So, R t is P v by n. If you substitute here, 3 by 2 P v by number of moles into Avogadro's number. Number of moles into Avogadro's number will become total number of molecules. So, this is becoming equal to 3 by 2 P v by capital N which they are asking you. So, 2 into 10 to the power minus 9, 3 by 2, 10 to the power 5, 10 to the power minus 3 by n. Clear to you? So, your n will be equal to 3, 10 to the power 2. And here, 2 into 2, 4, 10 to the power minus 9, 3 by 4 is 0 0.75, 10 to the power 11. Please check the answer, 0 0.75, 10 to the power 11, answer will be number 4. This is total number of molecules present in container. I hope you people have understood it clearly. Moving to question number 8 now, relative permittivity they had given you, mu r they have given you 1. So, c equal to 1 by under root mu naught epsilon naught, v will be equal to 1 by under root mu epsilon, mu naught mu r epsilon naught epsilon r. A 1 by mu naught epsilon naught is c, c by under root mu r epsilon r, mu r is 1. So, it will be c by under root epsilon r, epsilon r they had given you 81. So, it will become c by root 81, it will become c by 9. So, your v will be equal to 3 10 to the power 8 by 9. Am I right? So, you can make it 30 by 9 
10 to the power 7, it will become 3.3 .3 nearly into 10 to the power 7 meter per second. So, answer will be for this question will be 1. Did you understand this? Let us move now to question number 9. Map the following if all the rods have same density, same radius. First one directly ml square by 3. You know for any rod, actually they are showing as a rectangular, okay, no, the figure is like that. It is basically rod. For the rod, moment of inertia about an axis passing through midpoint and perpendicular to its length is ml square by 12. Use parallel axis theorem about the edge ml square by 12 plus ml by 2a square ml square by 4, ml square by 12 plus ml square by 4, how much ml square by 3. The standard formula you can easily remember. So, for this it should be ml square by 3. Okay, no. So, one ka answer this will be B. Okay, no. What a only one answer one ka B. No need to do any one. Directly I can see here it is one ka B, one A, two may one C, one D. No need to do other three. Directly I will take one. Okay, no. But anyhow, we must know all others. Here, Again ml square by 3, but length they have given you 2L. They have given you rod have same density and same radius. So if you go for mass of rod, the M will be equal to cross-sectional area. Okay, no? The cross-sectional area into length, the volume is pi r square L rho. Am I right? So, in that they are telling you same radius, same density, this is same. So, m is proportional to length, length is twice, so its mass will be 2m, okay. Again formula will be ml square by 3, so 2m l square is 2l by 3, am I right? So, you are getting 4 to 8 ml square by 3 it will be 8 ml square by 3, check it is D, for this it will be D. Understood now? For this length is L, this will become simply ml square by 12, it will be 8. And for this, again ml square by 12, length is 2L, so 2m L. 2L square by 12, so it will become 8 by 12 ML square 2 by 3, so 2 by 3 ML square, so this will be C, check 1B, 2D, 3A, 4C, this is for this answer will be number 1 one of the easiest question, whenever we are studying about moment of inertia, first you are taking for rod only ml square by 12 and ml square by 3 you are remembering. Let us now move to question number 10 now, 9 we have completed now, yes, now we are on 10, particle is executing SHM having maximum kinetic energy E, E is total energy amplitude is A, find displacement for mean position when kinetic energy 3 by 4, why you will do, okay, no, you know that potential energy that is more easier, E equal to half M omega S square A S square, okay, no, they are asking you displacement. I can go even for kinetic energy, no problem, kinetic energy formula half m omega s square a s square minus x s square and I can take 3 by 4, but we can save 5 to 10 second time by taking potential energy, little why sir, potential energy will be simply half m omega s square x s square 
and it is kinetic energy so potential energy will be e by 4 if i go for potential energy okay no this is e by 4 this is half m omega s square x square you take this ratio this is cancelled you are getting here 4 a s square by x square so x square equal to a square by 4 x will be equal to a by 2 check this you can get it from kinetic energy also your kinetic energy is half m omega s square a s square minus x square and this will be equal to 3 by 4 times of half m omega s square a s square half m omega s square cancel a s square minus x square 3 a s square by 4 here 4 4 transfer that side 4 x square is a s square x square a s square by 4 x equal to a by 2 answer is here are you understanding now by both way you can do but when you are using potential energy it will be easier to solve now let us move to number 11 for a given pv diagram ab is isothermal at temperature t1 t1 is greater than t2 okay now if you go for work done Okay, now PV diagram. It is you take the area enclosed. Undoubtedly, area enclosed by AB is much greater than area enclosed by BC or AD or CD. That is one way. Just by seeing the PV diagram, we can say, or you can go for RT log e V2 by V1. So when you see this work done for AB. will be greater than any work done for any process secondly for bc or da they have not mentioned the process also so if you take the area enclosed undoubtedly work done will be more for ab so w ab will be greater than wbc not only wbc it will be greater than for any other areas either enclosed by bc or enclosed by ad clear to you so for this answer will be number 1 or what then in isothermal process you can take nrt log e v2 by b1 by that way also we are finding that work done in the process a to b it will be more okay no so work done is positive in that case and it is more now let us move to next questions for this answer is 1 i am now on number 12 you have a container you have a hole so force exerted must be balanced by frictional force prevent it from sliding how much force either you directly remember formula rho a v a squared or you can derive it f equal to dm by dt into v am i right now dm by dt will be how much rho into volume volume you will be taking cross sectional area they have given you a x by t v x by t is v rho a v a square okay now or you can mark it dx by dt so here dx by dt again v rho a v a square so rho uh they have given you a so this is a rho a v a square if this height you are taking h then v a square will be 2 g h this is your f this must be equal to frictional force frictional force is mu mg mu m rho 
into volume a into h a into h into g how many quantities are cancelled you see that they are asking you find the coefficient of friction mu rho is cancelled okay g is cancelled h is cancelled here it is 2a here it is mu a mu equal to 2a by a so answer for this question will be number 2 check understood no this one also had come many times mainly this formula beta f will be equal to rho a v a squared it's a very famous formula okay if there will be no friction due to this force this vessel will start moving in backward direction here friction is just preventing it to slide anyhow you understood it let us move now to question number 13 now two solid spheres of radius 4 on an r having same mass density kept at a distance of 8 r so we have one sphere and you have second sphere it has radius r it has radius 4 r and they are kept at a distance of 8 r so from here till here it is 8 r clear to you find moment of inertia of the system about the axis passing through center of the line joining their centers so this is 8 r my axis will be here this will be 4 r and this will be your 4 r clear to you they are asking you moment of inertia the first let us go for the mass because anywhere m is not there so for this if i am taking this as m1 and this one i am taking as m2 m1 will be 4 by 3 pi r cube rho and m2 will be 4 by 3 pi 64 r cube rho so m2 will be equal to 64 m1 keep in hand where m1 is 4 by 3 pi r q rho now one by one find moment of inertia because it is a solid sphere for solid sphere about its diameter we know it is 2 by 5 mr squared so first i am going for this i net will become 2 by 5 m1 r squared okay now plus parallel axis theorem from here it is situated at a distance 4 r clear to you so it will become when you are going for parallel axis theorem about this axis moment of inertia about its center of mass plus this distance m into this distance squared so it will become m1 16 r squared this is for m1 for m2 2 by 5 m2 m2 is 64 m1 okay directly and r is 4 r squared 4 r squared means 16 r squared plus mr 64 m1 okay and 4 r squared is again 16 r squared this much you have okay and now only calculation you have so everywhere you have m1 okay so m1 i am keeping out it is r squared r squared r squared r squared r squared also keep out you have 2 by 5 plus 16 plus you have here 128 into 16 by 5 plus this is 64 
into 16 and you will have to go for m1. m1 is 4 by 3. 4 by 3 pi r cube rho. Okay, no. This is m1. r squared. So this will become r squared and you will have to calculate this. Okay, no. If these two you are adding, it will become 82 by 5 plus 128 into 16 by 5 plus 64 into 16. Am I right? This much you have. So, this will become 4 by 3 pi rho r 5 and 82 by 5 plus 128 into 16 by 5 plus 64 into 16, when you will calculate it, you will be getting 5800 by 3 pi rho r 5, answer will be number 2. Clear to you? Easily you can calculate it. Now, let us move to number 14. For the given circuit, switch is closed at t equal to 0. Find the time after which voltage across capacitor becomes 50 volt. Okay. So, here they are asking you about voltage here 50, they have given you 100. Okay, no. So, when you will go for V equal to V naught e to the power minus T by RC, okay, no. you have V equal to V naught e to the power minus T by tau, tau is RC. So, you have this 50, V naught is 100 T by time constant you can easily get R into C. The RC separately keep it R and 10 to the power minus 6, it is 10 to the power minus 4. So, it is 10 to the power minus 4. This is 1 by 2 e to the power minus t by 10 to the power minus 4. It means that you have e to the power t, I am reversing, by 10 to the power minus 4 is 2 t by 10 to the power minus 4 log base e to 0 0.693. So, t will become 0 0.693 into 10 to the power minus 4 second. If you are going for microsecond, it will become 69.3 10 to the power minus 6 means microsecond. 14, answer will be 1. Did you understand? Simple V equal to V naught e to the power minus T by tau, where tau is RC. Now, let us move to next question. Again, a very famous question. Already they had asked this question in IIT, and again they are asking you. They have two capacitors in a steady state. Total charge will always remain constant. So, how much charge it will have? It will have charge 2 C V. It will have charge C V. The Q will become 3 C V. It will always remain constant. Now, what they say you? A dielectric of dielectric constant K is inserted here. When you are inserting K, Okay, let us suppose new PD becomes V dash. Then now how much charge will be there? This is Q initial. Q final will be how much? It will become K C V dash. You have not changed this. So, it will be 2 C V dash. Now, Q initial must be equal to Q final 
थ्री सी वी विल बी इक्वल टू ओके के सी वी डैश टू सी वी डैश सी सी कैंसल्ड सो थ्री वी विल बिकम के प्लस टू वी डैश सो वी डैश यू गॉट थ्री वी बाय k plus 2 you are getting v dash equal to 3 v by k plus 2 answer is number 3 tell me did you understand it clearly principle of conservation of charge initial charge on capacitors and final charge on capacitor both will be equal clear to you now let us move to next question this is related to de broglie wavelength you know that lambda equal to h by p <coughs> so first you go for particle lambda for particle h by mv whether it is electron or what because mass they have given you that of electron but electron cannot move with velocity 6 meter per second so h by p so this is there and momentum of photon photon momentum directly they have given you this is for particle and photon they had given you h by 2 10 to the power minus 27 unit you will check it units are equal now they are telling you if de broglie wavelength of particle is k times wavelength of photon means this h by 6 and 54 i am multiplied 10 to the power minus 31 this one is k times h by 2 10 to the power minus 27 they are asking you k h is cancelled k will be 2 10 to the power minus 27 54.6 into 10 to the power minus 31 clear to you so now it will become how much 27 minus 31 it is okay now so 20000 it will become 2 10 to the power 4 by 54.6 so it will become 20000 by i am taking 5 54.6 fifty nearly 100 by 2 you take okay the nearly 54.6 less than 400 so Less than 400 in between 366 and 322. You can divide. You will check it. When you will be dividing, you will be getting answer 366. Nearly it will be 366. Clear to you? I feel you are understanding that. Okay. Now let us move to next question. Division you can do na. Number. 17 now two prism of same angle of refraction are arranged as shown light is incident on the system and it goes undeviated a light will go undeviated when medium will be same na unless medium will not be same certainly light will be deviated when it will move from one prism to other prism find wavelength of incident light n1 n2 they have given you if both medias are same then the refractive indices must be same they have used symbol n1 usually we are using symbol mu so for this symbol n1 must be equal to n2 direct they had given us 1.2 plus 10.8 10 to the power minus 14 by lambda s squared it will be equal to 1.45 plus 1.8 ten to the power minus 14 pi lambda square 
if light has to move undeviated medium must be same or you can say that refractive indices of both medias must be equal. Now they are asking me wavelength I have to calculate it. So 10 to the power of minus 14 minus 14 10.8 minus 1.8 so it will become 9 10 to the power minus 14 by lambda squared. 1.45 minus 1.2 means it will be 0 0.25 ok. So my lambda s squared will become 9 by 0 0.25, 0 0.25 is 1 by 4, 4 you take up it will become 36. So 36 10 to the power minus 14 lambda should be 6 10 to the power minus 7 meter. Let us see the answer. They have given you answer in nanometer. You can make it 600, 10 to the power minus 9 meter, 600 nanometer. So answer for this problem will be lambda 600 nanometer. Answer will be number 1. Now let us move to question number 18. For the given circuit, find current and phase difference between V and I. It is AC simple problem. First, get omega. Omega is 2 pi f. 2 pi f is 50, it is 100 pi. Okay. Now, I am interested in finding impedance. For impedance, you will have to go for L omega, inductive reactance, it is 0 0.07. The 100 pi into 0 0.07, 122 by 7, it is 0 0.07, 100.07 cancel, 22 ohm. Clear. So, my impedance of LR circuit under root R squared plus L omega squared. R they have given you 12. So, it is 12 squared plus 22 squared, 144 plus 484. Nearly it is 8. Okay, no. It is 628. I can take nearly 25, root of 625. Okay, no. Yeah, is 25. So I am taking 25 ohm as impedance of the circuit. You want current. So my current will become V naught 220 by 25. Okay, no. I RMS is V RMS by Z. Your V RMS is 220, Z is 25. We have to calculate 5 times 8.8 ampere. So, your I RMS will become 8.8 .8 ampere. Check it very unique answers they are giving, they should not give like that. Any child just by getting current, they can tick one, no need to find out second quantity. They are asking you phase difference also, why I will calculate? Because 8.8 .8 is given only in one answer. But if you want to find out, because it is LR circuit better, so here it is I, means R, here you will go for XL, okay, no? you want phase difference. So, if you take phi, so 10 phi will become x L means L omega by R, L omega is 22, R is 12. So, it will become 2 times 11 by 6, nearly tan inverse 1.83 you are getting. So, answer will be 1. 
tell me did you follow it clearly if you have followed it let us move to number 19 now a particle of mass m is projected from the surface of planet a of mass m radius r this question in iit advanced it has come undoubtedly data was a bit different but model is same what should be the velocity of projection such that particle reaches to another planet b which is at a distance of a tar from planet a planet b has mass 9m and radius 2r tell me is it essential to project the body from one surface of one planet to surface of other planet you are projecting it from surface of planet a and you want that it should reach to planet b clear to you i want to say one thing at the time independent houses were there to so my house independent house side by my neighbor's house and at the time small houses would be there lawn will be there boundary wall would be there independent houses were there my father and his father somehow or the other they were not talking okay but we two were very close friends we were exchanging comics book and all in childhood but i can't go to his house he can't come to my house if i want to give any book na one or two bricks from boundary wall we have removed i was going and keeping that comics book or whatever ball and all whichever i want to give to my friend i was keeping there returning to home he was coming from his house near his boundary wall he was taking it from there so boundary wall was the neutral point neutral place where we two were talking my mummy was also talking to auntie just by standing near boundary wall the here also no need to project the body from surface of one planet to other planet i remember when in advance this question had come they have taken two stars a smaller star and a bigger star and they were asking that with what velocity you should project the ball so that it it should reach to the surface of other star the star they have replaced by planet okay no and it is idealistic condition because when they speak about planet so many other forces will be acting a star will also influence it they have neglected it you have to consider only gravitational field due to these two planets to first find out where is the boundary wall what is boundary wall the neutral point where net gravitational field is zero suppose that one is situated this distance is 8 r they had given you at a distance x from here okay so whether directly formula also you know the distance of neutral point from a smaller one if you are considering okay no it will become d by under root m2 by m1 okay no because in between it is there plus 1 or minus 1 you will be taking here directly i am showing you so g due to this gravitational field at a distance x 9m by x squared gm and this distance is 8r okay now it will become 8r minus x squared clear so gravitational field due to this and gravitational field due to this at neutral point must be equal so g m g m cancel take out root 3 by x 1 by 8 r minus x so you are getting x equal to 24 x minus 24 r minus 3 x so you are getting 4 x equal to 24 r x will be equal to okay 6 r am i right you are taking 8 r minus x 
and x is 6r. The neutral point must be situated, okay, no, okay, this should be situated. If you are taking this, it will be far away. Its gravitational field will go to far away. X will be 6r. You are getting 6r here. So this point will be situated from here at a distance 6r. Check it. You have to project, okay, neutral point, one minute, check this, G, I am taking here 9m, distance I have taken x squared, here it is Gm, 8 are minus x squared, these two fields should be equal, I am taking root 3 by x, here it will be 1 by 8 are minus x, 24 r minus 3x, this is x, 4x is 24r, x will be equal to 6r, clear to you? Now when you got x equal to 6r, you have to project the body from the surface to this distance 6r, okay now, it should be, neutral point will be situated nearer to a smaller body and from here it should be Okay, no, situated at a distance 6r. The here kinetic energy plus potential energy and here it should be potential energy, it will be due to both. So when you are taking on this point, potential energy, how much you are getting? You are getting minus g m m um, particle mass m by r and due to this potential energy will be minus g 9 m into m by this total distance is 8 r, so this distance will be 7 r plus kinetic energy will be half m v squared. This should be equal to potential energy here. This is from here at a distance 6 r. So minus g m m by, from center it is 6 r and due to this it will be at a distance 2 r minus g m m by 2 r. So this is 9 m, here you will have to take 9, a small m first we are cancelling everywhere, you are getting here capital G m, let it be minus G m by r minus 9 G m by 7 r plus V a square by 2, this one is 3 by 2 minus 3 by 2 G m by r minus G m by 2 r. I want V a square by 2. So this will go that side. G m by R you take common. It will be 1 plus 9 by 7. This is minus 3 by 2 minus 1 by 2. Okay, no. So it will be 2 minus 3 by 2 minus 1 by 2. So minus 4 by 2 minus 2. So we are getting g m by r, okay, 9, 7, 16 minus 2, okay, no, 16 minus 2, so this will become 7, 9, okay, I will write that, 7, 9, minus 14 by 7, so v squared by 2 equal to g m by r, and it is 2 by 7, so V squared, V will be under root 2 into 2, it will become 4, 4 by 7, G M by R. Please check that, under root I am getting at root 4 by 7 G M by R, root 4 by 7 G M by R, answer will be number 2. You must understand here concept of neutral point, the point where 
gravitational field due to this planet and that planet is cancelling each other. Secondly, you will have to consider principle of conservation of energy. So from here when you are projecting the particle, it will have potential energy plus kinetic energy and when it is reaching to 6 R neutral point, it will have only potential energy or you can simply say kinetic energy imparted to the particle must be equal to difference of potential energy between surface of a smaller planet and neutral point. Clear to you? I hope you understood this. Now I am moving to question number 20. Circular scale division of a screw gauge is 50. <coughs> okay. 5 full rotations advances circular scale by 5 millimeter. What is pitch? In a screw gauge, linear distance travel by okay, tip of the screw when we give one complete rotation to the head scale of the screw or head of the screw. When you are giving one complete rotation, it will move by 1 millimeter. So your pitch will be 1 millimeter. The list count is pitch 1 millimeter by number of divisions on head scale or circular scale, it is 50. So list count will be 1 by 50 millimeter. A statement 1, they had given you list count of the screw gauge 0 0.001 centimeter, it is completely wrong. Okay, it will become 2 10 to the power minus 2, 0 0.02 millimeter means 0 0.002 centimeter. So, statement 1 is a wrong statement. Statement 2 is directly total number of divisions. They must write total number of divisions on head scale or circular scale, the minimum they can say. If they will simply write total number of divisions, then I can say that even the second statement is also wrong. But you just take approximation after all memory best question it is. So statement 1 is a wrong statement, total number of divisions on circular scale if you take then this is correct statement. So statement 1 is okay wrong where it is, statement 1 is false, statement 2 is true. I hope you have understood clearly number 20 okay no and very very important vernal calipers screw gauge not only for mains exam also for advanced examination you should prepare superbly better now let us move to question number 21 i am now on 21 figure shows a conductor of tapered cone shape as one goes from left to right, choose correct option. You will directly go for I equal to N A V E. I electric current, N you know free electron density, number of free electrons present in unit volume, A cross sectional area, V drift speed, E charge on an electron. When current flows, I will be constant, any constant. So if you take here, so V will be A into V, you will take constant. So drift speed is proportional to 1 by A. As 1 goes from left to right, cross-sectional area decreases. When cross-sectional area will decrease, what will happen to drift speed of free electrons? It will increase. So answer, drift speed will increase. Whereas electric field is concerned, J into E you are taking. So J into E if you will take, electric field will increase, not will decrease. So answer for this is, drift velocity increases. Electric current, it will remain constant, you know. So for Question number 21, answer will be 2. I hope you understood it clearly. Now, let us move to question number 22 now. 
Newton's law of cooling based question, you have a body cools down from 61 to 49 degrees centigrade. <coughs> Very simple thing, mainly whenever I am seeing Newton's law of cooling and when you go for Stephen's law, the rate of cooling there is proportional to fourth power of absolute temperature, whereas in Newton's law of cooling, it is directly proportional to mean axis temperature, means power one. It is happening because in Stephen's law, the rate of radiation means body is being cooled by only one process and you are considering only radiation. But Newton was a practical man. On earth, suppose you have boiled milk and you have kept out. It is being cooled by all the three processes, mainly convection and radiation. And it is directly proportional to mean axis temperature. Suppose temperature is decreasing from theta 1 to theta 2 and room temperature is theta naught. Then rate of cooling theta 1 minus theta 2 by T is directly proportional. So you take K A on minus sign we are giving because temperature is falling theta mean minus theta naught and theta mean Okay, you can see that if boiled milk you are keeping for cooling, very fastly temperature will decrease. But when you, it will become lukewarm now and you want to put inside fridge, you will have to wait for much time. Okay, no? When temperature is very high, cooling rate is also high. It will cool very fast. Theta mean is k a theta 1 plus theta 2 by 2 minus theta naught. This is there. Now, let us go for that. They had given you 61 to 49 and 49 to 37. So, theta 1 minus theta 2 is same because 2, 12 degree and here also it is 12 degree and they are asking you time taken by the body to cool down. What I will think this is theta 1 minus theta 2 by t. This is same for both. This one is same for both. So, t is inversely proportional to t is inversely proportional to 1 by theta mean minus theta naught. Okay, no. So, you want 49 minus 37, no. So, let us take that time is T dash and by, they have given you 61 to 49 in 4 minutes. So, this is 4 equal to, now here mean is how much? 49 plus 6, it will be 55. So, this is 55 minus room temperature is 30 by here mean temperature is 42, 43, 49 and 37, you add divide by 2, okay, no, so 49 and 37 by 2, 43, so it is 43, okay, no. 43, there it is 55 right, minus 30, how much you are getting here? 25 by 13, okay, so T dash will become 100 by 13, okay, no? it will be 100 by 13. So, dividing 13 into 7, 91, 7 point. So, this is 90, nearly 7.7. So, 7.69 minute 
तो आंसर फॉर नंबर ट्वेंटी टू विल बी नंबर थ्री टेल मी डिड यू फॉलो इज इट क्लियर टू यू नाउ आई एम मूविंग टू क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी थ्री ए बार मैग्नेट दिस इज ऑसोलेशन मैग्नेटोमीटर प्रॉब्लम दे आर आंसरिंग यू बी यू नो डैट टी इक्वल टू टू फाइव अंडर रोड आई बाई एम बी everything they are giving you they have given you 10 oscillations in 5 second okay time period time taken to complete one oscillation 5 by 10 this is 1 by 2 2 pi because pi square they have given so 2 pi under root i they have given you 10 to the power minus 6 m they have given you 9.85 okay i will be cancelling here okay pi squared so pi will be root of 9.85 directly we can cancel and this into b so this pi this you cancelled so 1 by 2 means 1 by 4 will become 4 tend to the power minus 6 by b so b will become 16 into 10 to the power minus 6 tesla 16 micro tesla easy no directly you got it A straight formula for oscillation magnetometer time period 2 pi under root i by mb now let us move to two disc have same mass density but the radii are different it is capital r and small r and uh, they are telling you to compare moment of inertia for bigger disk suppose if radius is capital r <coughs> they are asking you about an axis perpendicular to the plane of disk and passing through its center that one you know it is m R square by two, so your I one will become M R square by two. They are telling you same mass density, so you will be going for volume. The pi R square T thickness I am taking by two, so pi into rho, so pi R four T. Rho by two, and for other disc of radius r, they are asking you one of its diameter. So about one of its diameter, if you use perpendicular axis theorem, it will become m r square by four, m r square by four plus m r square by four, then it will become m r square by two. Your i j is m r square by two. Right now, so I x will be equal to I y, that is m r square by four. So I two m r square by four. So it will become pi r square t rho r square. Okay, no, by four. So you have pi t rho, and this is becoming r four. By four, am I right? So now you see they're asking you I one by I two, I one by I two. If you take the ratio, okay, no, this pi r square. If you check here, what is left? Pi t rho, pi t rho is cancelled. So it will be left here r four by two. And here it is r four by four, two times it will become two r four by r four. Simple problem. You have to remember moment of inertia of a disc about an axis passing through its center and perpendicular to its plane m r square by two. That's all. And then perpendicular axis theorem. When you are taking about one of the diameter, it will become m r square by four. Let us move now to 
next question now I am on 25 now <coughs> equivalent capacitance they are asking you and three different dialectic medias are there k 3k 5k t 2d 3d so one by one we will get it first let us go for c1 epsilon naught k a is same by d c2 epsilon naught 3 k a by 2 d c3 epsilon naught <coughs> they have given you 5 k 5 k a by 3 d so if i take epsilon naught k a by d as c1 you let us assume it as c later on we will substitute calculation will be easier then this will become 3 c by 2 and this will become 5 c by 3 am i right they are asking you equivalent capacitance series combination no so 1 by c equivalent 1 by c1 1 by c2 1 by c3 1 by c equivalent it is 1 by c plus 2 by 3 c plus 3 by 5 c so 1 by c equivalent what you are getting now that is 15 c so this will be 15 3 5 10 5 3 9 so it is 25 and 9 34 34 by 15 c so c equivalent will be 15 c by 34 okay now let us check the answer okay so I am getting C equivalent, they had given 34, I am getting 15 C by 34, 1 by C equivalent is this 2 by 3 C, 1 by C and 3 by 5 C, it is 15 C, 15, 5, 10, 5, 3 times 9, 15 C by 34 it should be. Okay, no. So it will become 15 C value. You have epsilon naught K A by 34 D. Okay. In my opinion, answer should be 15 epsilon naught K A by D. And I feel that not a single answer is there. Answer should be 15 epsilon naught K A by 34 D. Okay. So all the answers given are wrong. In my opinion, answer will be 15 by 34, 15 by 34 epsilon naught K should come here K A by D this will be the answer all four answers are wrong memory based questions no so a b c d certainly answers may be wrong okay no did you understand this it is series combination first you have taken c1 then you have gone for c2 then you have gone for c3 series combination 1 by c equivalent 1 by c1 plus 1 by c2 plus 1 by c3 and whatever values you got okay just you inverted answer will be this i feel that if they will correct it epsilon not k they should put here k and they should put here d then answer will come okay no anyhow leave it let us move now an electron is revolving in a circular orbit of radius radius is half meter a speed they have given you 2.2 10 to the power minus 6 meter per second they are asking you current current is e by t 
e by 2 pi r by v. So this is e v by 2 pi r. I will be equal to e 1.6 10 to the power minus 19. V they have given you 2.2 10 to the power minus 6 by 2. 22 by 7, 7 take it up and R is 1 by 2.5 meter, 2, 2 cancel, 22, this will become 0 0.1. So you will have 1.6 into 0 0.7 into 10 to the power minus 25 ampere, 1.6 into 0.7. So it is 1.12 into 10 to the power minus 25 ampere, your answer is number 1. Did you understand this clearly? Now let us move to next question, I am now on 27, a capacitor is discharging against a resistor R, when capacitor is discharging. At same time, a radioactive substance is also decaying with mean life 30 millisecond. Ratio of charge on capacitor and ratio. Ratio of charge and activity remains same. Means Q and activity. Q equal to Q naught e to the power minus T by, okay, no capacitance and resistance, they have given you find the resistance. So RC and activity will be equal to A naught e to the power minus lambda t. Am I right now? Now they are telling you ratio is equal, it means e to the power minus t by RC, e to the power minus lambda t. So you will have T by RC will be equal to, okay now 1 by this e to the power lambda T, you will take directly lambda T, so R will be equal to T cancel, R will be equal to 1 by C lambda, okay now. So lambda you will have to take, 1 by lambda you are taking directly mean life they have given you, mean life is 30 millisecond and C they have given you 100 micro, okay. So R will be equal to 30 millisecond, so 30 into 10 to the power minus 3, this is mean life 1 by lambda and C value they had given you 100 micro, 100 10 to the power minus 6. So it will become how much? 30, okay, by 100 means 10 to the power minus 4, 10 to the power minus 3. So 10 to the power minus 1, it will become 300 ohm. So for this, your answer is 300 ohm. Is it clear to you? check they have given you Q by Q naught will be equal to A by A naught means E to the power minus T by RC directly they are giving you E to the power minus lambda T. Lambda disintegration constant, 1 by lambda you are taking as mean lifetime. Now let us move to next question, 28, a wire of length. L they have given you 0 0.1 meter, cross sectional area is 0 0.04, not clear, into 10 to the power minus 4 meter square, delta L they have given you 0 0.001, Young's modulus 0 0.5 10 to the power 9 Pascal and you are converting this energy, energy equal to how much? Very simple, 
we have mugged up energy stored in a stress restraint per unit volume energy density half into stress into strain simple so total energy will be how much energy density into volume and this must be equal to they are telling you this energy is transferred as kinetic energy this must be equal to half m v squared finished but stress will be how much because force they have not given you restoring force they have not given you so this is half stress will be young's modulus into strain means strain squared into volume this will be equal to half m v squared separately let us calculate strain how much your strain is del l by l del l by l so it is 0 0.001 by 0.1 am i right to so 10 to the power minus 3 10 to the power minus 1 it is 10 to the power minus 2 strain has no unit no dimensional formula so now you substitute or half young's modulus it is 0.5 means half 10 to the power 9 10 to the power minus 4 volume volume is cross sectional area into length cross sectional area is 0 0.04 10 to the power minus 4 and length is 10 to the power 0 0.1 so it will become 4, 2, 1, 3, 10 to the power minus 7 meter cube. So volume is 4, 10 to the power minus 7. As the data they have given you based on that I am doing. Now this is equal to half mass. Mass they have given you 20 gram. So 20. 10 to the power minus 3 and this is V squared. This 2, this 2, this 4 cancelled. This is 7 and 4, 11, 10 to the power 9, 10 to the power minus 2 and this 2, this will be 10. So this will be 10 to the power minus 2 V squared. So V squared I am getting 1. So I will get V will be equal to 1 meter per second. Okay. So if in a stressed string or wire, total energy is stored, if you are converting or giving to any particle in the form of kinetic energy, then velocity attained by the particle will be 1 meter per second. Simple, remember energy stored in any stretch the spring or wire within elastic limit. That is named as energy density, half stress into strain. If you want total energy, multiply it by volume and total energy you are just equating to half mv squared. I hope you understood. We were capable to collect, okay, only 28 questions through students. So with all 28 questions under, undoubtedly on memory they have told us so there may be some error or there may be some change in the question, but mainly for understanding the concepts, okay, these are important when really when question will be given, published, okay, again we will come in front of you with correct solution. Thank you to all of you.